Hey, Monica. Hey, Kim. Hey, Stacy. I see you over there, Dave. And that's cool. We don't mind if the guys join us because after all, that could be someone's brother. That could be someone's dad, uncle, you know, and we need the guys. Although this is a channel that I have specifically pulled together for women so that we can start businesses and start identifying additional revenue streams. I'm happy to have the guys here as well. So I am not complaining. Everyone is welcome. So with that being said, my name is Rona and welcome to the 90 Day Startup. I'm so excited that you could be here today. My purpose and my goal is to help you to save time, make money, increase productivity, and grow your startup. So we're going to get started. Today's video is all about how to find your customers. So let's get started. So today we're gonna to be identifying four primary customer categories, starting with the government, state and local government, community, and friends and family. The largest customer in America is the United States government. There are over 400 departments, government agencies, and sub-agencies combined in the United States. Here's a look at the government-wide category structure for fiscal year 2014 that shows 10 categories where over $400 billion was spent throughout all the government agencies. Let's take a look at some of those categories. The first category we have here is IT, which has over $49 billion accounted for that particular category. Professional services, $61 billion. Security and protection, $5.5 billion. Facilities and construction, $75.5 billion. Industrial products and services, 10 billion, office management, 1.9 billion, transportation and logistics services, $26.8 billion, travel and lodging, over 2 billion, human capital, over 4 billion, and last but not least, medical, which is over $36 billion. So when you think about the big picture, the government has facilities, and locations throughout the entire United States. And although that is the largest customer, we're also gonna take a look at the next category, which is state and local government. But before we get there, we have to ask ourselves a question. If we decide to go into the government arena of doing business, where we're talking about contracts and doing work with the government, thing to keep in mind is, who do you know? So you may be wondering, how do I find a government customer? Well, there's so many places where you can find government customers. In fact, chances are you know someone who knows someone, who knows someone who works for the government. In fact, because you're watching this video, you actually know someone who knows someone who works for the government. Now, there are all kinds of products and services that the government needs. So the question, the next question to ask yourself is, what kind of products and services do you actually offer? You know, what, what can you offer the government? Well, because the government needs so many things, and as we saw in the 400 plus billion uh, government spending categories that we saw, they need all kinds of uh, products and services. So it drills down to what it is that you actually offer. And even if you're not ready to do business with the government specifically, there are places that you can um, reach out to in order to get that information. The next question to ask yourself is, what types of products and services do I offer? Well, as you can see just by a few of these pictures, many of these fit into the categories that we saw in the previous slides. They have over 10 categories, and of course, within those categories are subcategories. And so what you then have to then determine is, what are your products and services? And are they, are they items that the government or services that the government can use? Chances are the answer is yes. 
Now, is your company scalable? Can you fulfill the government contract? Because that's going to be a major thing to consider. What you don't want to do is end up getting a contract with the government after jumping through all of the hoops and all of the paperwork that you have to do and then find yourself in a situation when where you can't perform to the contract specifications. That could be bad news. So the first thing that I would recommend that you would do, of course, is contact the SBA. So I'm going to take you out to the SBA site so that you can see exactly where I'm talking about. If you are new to starting your business and you know that you want to do business with the government, after you download the 90-day startup checklist, I would definitely start organizing and framing your business and your goals and activities towards a format that government agencies find acceptable when you approach them for doing business. You can get all kinds of information on that at the sba.gov. So make sure you check out this website because there's going to be tons of information for you um, that will help you streamline your processes and identify a good starting point for doing business with the government. So we definitely want to keep in mind while we're doing our planning, are we going to be able to scale up and fulfill the services or the products that we say we can provide to the government? The next thing is probably one of the most important things, too, that you will do as you're preparing to do business with the government. We may not start out the gate doing business exactly with the government day one, but any of our customers that we do work for or provide services to, to some degree, will serve as a past performance. And it's really just a, um, a way of stating what it is that you've done in the past. That's your past performance. So if you have 20 customers and 15 of them think that you're great and that you're able to provide the service and products that you said that you could deliver on, then those are favorable past performances. So your past performances are almost like references. So if you think about it that way, your past performances are former customers and people that you've done work for that can pretty much vouch for you. So when you get ready to fill out all of the paperwork that you have to in order to get vetted to be on a list to provide products and services to a government client, they will want to know what is your past performance? Have you done exactly what it is that we're looking for? And if you have, then those past performances, at some point, your references can be contacted just to make sure that you're able to provide the products and services or the services that you basically say that you can do. That's going to be very important as well. Now, I didn't change any of the questions. Who do you know? What products and services do you offer? Or are you scalable? and your past performances, because that's going to be important at the state and local level as well. The great thing about working at state and local level is that it's not as large and as intimidating as the government uh, level can be. And then the closer you are to the DMV, which is the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, the less intimidated you'll be by the government. The other thing to note, too, is if you're located in one of the 50 states outside of the District of Columbia where um, a lot of the government agencies are located, partner up with someone. Find out who's there. And I'll be showing you pretty soon a couple of sites that I would recommend you go to in order to drill down to where those resources are and how to find information on your specific state and location. Now, if you're interested in doing business at the state and local level, I definitely recommend that you go to the SBA link where they have information on local resources for your particular state. Now, once you get there, you're also going to see a link that says Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs. They are located all over the United States. In fact, there is a link on the SBA site. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here so that you can see where it takes you. But if you get lost or if you end up in somewhere else um, on this site, just go to Small Business Development Centers 
and you'll be able to find the same information. And it should definitely um, put you onto some resources in your local, um, in your particular location. And so this is a quick screenshot of what you will find. Again, if you want to find out more information, go to Small Business Development Centers, and it should take you to this link. Now, I was able to get drilled down to this from the SBA site, so um, sba.gov site. So this should be a site that you definitely um, should be able to find information on. Just keep in mind that the same four questions still apply. Who do you know? What products and services do you provide? Are you scalable? Can you fulfill whatever those products and services are? And can you provide references and past performances? Very important. And at some point, if you've been in business for a number of years, your finances or some of your accounting may come into question as well. So you got to do things by the book. But if you're starting a business, you know this and you know this going into starting a business. So it's just a mindset. You make adjustments, you get the right people on your team that can make sure that you have that information available and you move forward. You defer that and delegate that to the professionals that are helping you become more successful in your startup. So easy breezy. Don't worry about that. Even at the state level, these are things that you will definitely have to take into consideration because, after all, this is your backyard. So the relationships that you cultivate and nurture at the state and local level will definitely play a role in whether or not you're able to even expand your business to a national or even a global level for that matter. So you definitely want to make sure that you nurture your relationships as you progress and grow in your business. Community. Now that's always important, of course, because your community is is where you live it's where you shop and it's where you interact with your friends and family for the most part it's also important to foster those relationships and truth be told people at the government level and at the state and local level are made up of your community so they're almost one in the same and you never know who you know and you never know who can introduce you to someone who can put you in contact with someone who's in need of some type of work or a certain product that you are offering. It's always a good thing to have the support of your friends and family when you're starting your business, but a lot of the work that you're going to have to do in order to find your customers has very little to do with your friends and family, unfortunately. It's going to require a lot of research. A lot of what it is that you're going to have to do in order to find customers for your business can have a little bit to do with some of the contacts your friends and your family may have, but a lot of it is going to be up to you. So in addition to the research that you're going to do in order to identify where your potential customers may be, you definitely want to nurture your relationships. Now, at this point, you have an idea of the type of business or service, or you already know what your business or service is you have a plan now the next thing requires action so what do we do next the next thing that we do is go to the 90daystartup.com download a copy of the checklist do the quick 10 question survey and or start identifying items on the list that you want to tackle that gets you closer to your goal of identifying and finding your customers be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can get the latest updates and videos on how you can start and or improve your business. And also be sure to check out the links below where you can get additional information on what we're doing at the 90 Day Startup. Once you download your checklist, make sure you put your information in a binder so that you can keep up with all of the items that we're addressing in your 90 Day Startup checklist. All right, so thank you for joining me today. I look forward to helping you save time, make money, increase productivity, and grow your startup.